Hello and welcome to the Classroom Professor Math Podcast. This program is designed to help you to prepare and teach mathematics more easily, efficiently and effectively, to truly engage your students in mathematical thinking and to develop their numeracy. Good day, everyone. We're now in Geneva in Switzerland and uh, we just took a boat trip across the lake and found this wonderful uh, botanical garden, Jardin Botanique. And in the grounds is this building behind me, which is La Musée d'Histoire des Sciences. I think I've got that right. Uh, the Museum of the History of Science. And inside, of course, a lot of historical displays, many of them around uh, uh, optical telescopes and um, that sort of observatory sort of uh, apparatus. Um, I must say this is a pleasant surprise after looking into filming public monuments and places in France where there are restrictions. I had a policeman come and tell me um, yesterday <laughs> outside Lac de Triomphe that I couldn't use a tripod. So there you go. I thought it was just a public space. Anyway, here at the museum is uh, a lot of, there, there are a lot of displays about uh, science and the history of science as you'd expect. And there's some really nice ones at the front here, which I'm just going to talk about. This piece of equipment behind me is called an analematic sundial. Um, it lacks any sort of vertical piece, as you can see. So uh, the way it's used, there is a strip in the middle of the space with dates marked on it, um, with winter dates at the closest end and summer dates at the end. So you stand on the date or the position closest to the date stand up nice and straight and then your shadow will point um, towards the position on the ellipse which shows the time and of course if it's summertime or daylight saving time then you must uh, subtract an hour to uh, find the correct position and to even more uh, more accurately uh, fine-tune it on the the explanation over here there's a little graph that shows the number of minutes that you should add or subtract to uh, get a more precise time I'm standing next to a model of Le Canon de Midi, the midday cannon. Uh, this has a cage over it to protect it from little fingers and probably big fingers as well. On this side there's a, a, an ordinary sundial with a shadow showing the time, but at this end is the interesting part. This is a model of a cannon, a real cannon that fires uh, gunpowder, and an apparatus with a magnifying glass at the top and it's connected to a curved piece of metal and there's an adjustment that can be made. So the idea was that somebody would look after this and each day would adjust the position of the magnifying glass very precisely I might add so that at midday the sun's rays would be focused by the magnifying glass on the gunpowder and it would set off the cannon. Presumably they didn't load a cannonball in it but it would just make a loud noise. And so it was used in the late 18th century by the people of Paris to regulate their clocks in their homes and places of business and so on, I presume. So we can imagine that in those days clocks weren't terribly accurate and so they would lose or gain minutes every single day. And so this would be a great way to check the accuracy of your clock each day. Um, as a child, I would have liked this to actually work I'd love this to actually fire some gunpowder. It's got a little track there, but um, sadly, no. I think the curator of the museum's missed an opportunity there, and they could have had something that actually goes bang every day. But there we go. This apparatus is called a gnomic globe. It's a, uh, if you like, a small model of the globe. Its axis is tilted very precisely to the latitude of this location in Geneva, which according to the sign here is 46 degrees and 12 minutes and then it has a movable arch. So the way to use this, I have to adjust the arch and minimize the shadow cast by the arch. So in other words, this will point uh, directly at the sun. 
and then if I'm correct it shows the time and here it shows um, halfway between 10 and 11 10 30 uh, this being daylight savings time it's actually 11 30 there's also a movable part here which is for showing the season so this slides up and down and this of course will relate to how high in the sky the Sun is uh, depending on the season and so if I slide this up until the again the shadow is minimized and it shows we're in spring no surprises there but we're more than halfway to ete or summer so there we go the gnomic globe now the apparatus that I've just shown you is uh, only available here at the museum of course but it points to some ideas that you could use in the classroom there is a wide range of activities that you can do with students with regards to the passage of time. You could certainly do a unit of work, depending on the age of the students, of course, about timekeeping uh, mechanisms and the ways that people have measured time over the millennia. So people have used uh, dripping water, they've used um, sand draining through a small hole, they've used mechanical um, clockwork type devices. They've used the sun and in the modern era of course we've used electronic devices and clocks that connect to the internet to connect to a, a central server somewhere and get very very accurate time. Astronauts and uh, people involved in space programs have to have highly accurate clocks and of course they have very specialized mechanisms for doing that. So although the passage of the sun across the sky is a pretty much a daily event even of course if it's over, overcast we know the sun is still tracing the same path day by day and therefore it might seem fairly mundane and routine you could reveal the complexities of measuring time and of measuring the position of the sun with your students and look at for example the different paths that the sun traces at different times in the year so in the middle of winter the sun will be lower in the sky in the summer it will be higher in the sky um, it rises and sets in different positions around the horizon to the east and west although it's always east and west it's it's going to be moving slightly north or south of those positions during the year and depending on the age of the students there are uh, a lot of different activities you could do I remember as a school child in England we made a simple sundial one day with a piece of paper and a drinking straw and a lump of plasticine and we went out very excitedly every half an hour or so and marked where the shadow of the sun was. I don't remember we did much more with that but as a teacher it would be nice to take those results and do an investigation about the results. There are so many things that that would reveal about the passage of time and the, the path that the sun traces. You could link all this of course to the study of astronomy and to the history of astronomy and to the different ideas that different civilizations had about which was moving the Sun or the earth is the Sun the center of the universe or is the earth the center of the universe and so on and there are uh, many many different uh, there were many different ideas over the the millennia about that that uh, you could incorporate into such a lesson um, you could investigate other as it were homemade timekeeping devices so you could um, create a clock that uses a, a candle burning down another um, old idea you could make your own uh, water clock with a container of water with a hole in the bottom and let the water out and you know mark off the time down the side each of those would have its own challenges but that uh, would connect nicely with a study of the history of timekeeping and the challenges that um, ancient uh, thinkers had to incorporate into what they were doing so the devices that I've shown you the equipment that's available here at the museum um, with this sort of display can often look quite simple and I think children can often take it for granted and go well it's another toy we can play with this and twiddle that knob and so on but it's clear that the devices that were invented over the centuries and millennia were not toys and were not just for uh, you know leisure activities but with serious timekeeping pieces um, and so we can do again do some real maths with some uh, quite simple ideas and quite simple equipment so I commend that idea to you thank you for joining me on the classroom professor math podcast 
You can email me via peter at classroomprofessor.com or follow me on Twitter with the username peter underscore price. You can also visit our website at www.classroomprofessor.com to download free resources including the ebook 10 Minutes a Day Times Tables Worksheets. If you have enjoyed this podcast, please go and rate the show on iTunes. I look forward to speaking with you next time. And until then, goodbye.